They're quite fond of their mascots over at Weekly Shonen Jump, aren't they? Manga series which stand as the pride of the magazine and will feature prominently on their front covers, top their polls, and become the face of the publication. The magazine's history of mascots covers beloved success stories such as Naruto, Kuroko's Basketball, Bleach, Dr. Dragon Slaw, Ball, Fist of the Note, North, Love Star, Ru, Yu Yu Hakusho, Ru, Slam Dunk, Nisekoi, My Gintama, Bakuman, and so much more. The question is, what's next? So many of these serials have come and gone, so who's going to take their place? Well, as it turns out, Weekly Jump's latest poster child is Kayu Shirai and Pazuka Demizu's The Promised Neverland. A surprise to see donning the front cover of a magazine popularised by action, excitement and superpowers. Even so, it's taken the polls by storm and has an anime adaptation slated for the new year. Does it have what it takes to join the Hall of Fame, or is its position short-lived? The kids of Grace Field House Orphanage have everything they could ever ask for. Good food, clean clothes, a rigorous education, and the love and attention of their caretaker, Mom. The smartest of the bunch, Emma, Norman, and Ray, cannot sate their curiosity about the gate beyond the fence they are forbidden from ever crossing. Once they uncover the truth, however, they are spurred into action and plan a daring escape from their lifelong home. Though under Mom's constant, watchful gaze, will they ever be able to leave with their lives? The promised Neverland takes a volume to really get started, but once it does, it really ramps up as a unique psychological thriller. Its tone is ominous from the outset, heavily telegraphing a big twist, but the story doesn't hinge upon that. It's only there so the narrative can pick up some momentum and actually go somewhere specific, the escape plot. It isn't as much about the initial twist or the escape itself as it is the deception, preparation, and planning beforehand. Knowledge is power in this manga, making the chapter to chapter mind battle between Mom and the orphans all about deductive reasoning and anticipating one another's moves and motives. With the orphans a clear disadvantage. And as a suspense manga, it's great at warming its way into your head and delivering some great surprises. The stakes just keep getting higher and higher and higher, pieces of information slipping through the cracks in such a way that the nature of the psychological battle shifts continuously. Even to us, inside knowledge about the outside world and the ultimate truth comes across gradually yet consistently over the course of the story. We learn something new every couple chapters or so, whereas other manga might rather dangle answers in front of you like a carrot on a stick just to keep you reading. That's not to say it's perfectly paced at all, in fact the story seems to really struggle with that at times. The second volume grinds to a halt for a few chapters to deal with a reveal before picking up the pace again. A reveal that ultimately doesn't amount to much once the dust is settled. I hope it doesn't suffer from these issues again, because that's not the only issue it has. It's a story propagated on countless questions the same way Attack on Titan is. It can be fascinating to unpackage a mystery this way, but it's often the kind of storytelling that runs a good thing into the ground if the answers need to be big enough to fill the gap that's been created by the question. I just hope The Promised Neverland will be able to live up to its own hype. Now some of the actual dialogue, while concise and fantastic at clueing the reader in, can sometimes do too much to exposit the story to you. Don't get me wrong, it uses visual storytelling to deliver its exposition well, but then a character will often just tell you it anyway. Show and tell is a bit too much. On top of that, it's common for our characters to just jump to conclusions without meaningful evidence, only for those assumptions to turn out to be true anyway. This is a glaring issue around the start of the manga and as these pieces of information are what the rest of the plot is founded upon, it might be hard for some to take this manga seriously after noticing that. Personally, I was able to see past this, because when it does start to use evidence-based deductive reasoning, it actually becomes extremely engaging. It has such a meticulously realised setting, the shift in perspective allowing us to see the orphanage for what it really is. The tiny, questionable details in their everyday lives that take on a new, sinister shadow looming over the principal characters. It might throw a little too much information at you at once to start with, but it's not hard to wrap your head around it after a while, as like I said, it's written concisely, in such a way that it gets across exactly what it needs to, when it needs to, in as few words as possible, without obsessing over covering all of its own bases. As a type of story that isn't exactly unique or original, The Promised Neverland does a good job of polishing those narrative elements that made its predecessor so enjoyable.
The characters of The Promised Neverland are ones that ultimately have to grow up fast in order to face a fatal, lingering threat. While some may read some of their thoughts and actions as sudden and incredible considering their age, this does result in a cast we can sooner relate to and empathise with. Emma is our main character and she's just… Uh, she's the emotional one whose sentimentality becomes a roadblock for a lot of Norman and Ray's plans, and while some people won't mind this, she can sometimes be an unwanted complication, for whom logistics need to be thrown out the window. Juxtaposition is good, don't get me wrong, but she can be stubbornly optimistic. I would say that Norman is an enabler of this, a smart, strategic character who envies Emma for her empathy. He's a good deal more interesting than Emma, as someone who is ruthlessly calculated and willing to manipulate even those closest to him in order to pull this escape plan off. His characters spiral into a dark frame of mind under the burden of responsibility, and just the things he's willing to consider under these circumstances while hiding behind that kind smile can be frightening at times. This is a fun development on his part, though out of the main three, Ray is undoubtedly the most likeable. He's calm, cool, collected, precise, decisive and intelligent. He's willing to throw away his own feelings for the sake of his own realistic expectations, which puts him at odds with Emma. It's just unfortunate that his character develops in the way that it does. <sighs> Emma, Norman and Ray's escape plan is in jeopardy when Mom starts to get suspicious, a chilling adversary for our main cast. She's known them all their lives and this deep, intuitive understanding makes her genuinely creepy as a villain whose motivations are intentionally vague, though some of her characterisation is too on the nose. She's not entirely villainous, clearly a person of strong conviction, but this firmness and lack of empathy for her own children is what makes her an effective antagonist. Though not my favourite, because on her right hand side is Sister Crone, a fucking awesome villain. While Mom is creepy, Crone is scary, competitive, disloyal and ambitious. She represents a very corporeal threat to her main three, though not a physical threat. I ended up rooting for her a little more than the main cast, she's just such a well written antagonist. As the two major villains of the story thus far, Mom and Crone are never inhuman. They have perfectly serviceable, downright relatable motivations. We can feel bad for them and sympathise with their predicament, but ultimately understand that they're doing what they do from a position of moral dismissal and aren't good people. While the children themselves let the story down a little at times, this is made up for in spades by a solid pair of villains. Pozuka Demuzu's art for this manga is great. It strays from the modern, clean, precise form of line work and opts for something that follows the rules of proportion loosely, making for buildings, clothing, landscapes, forced perspectives and a general aesthetic that's whimsically Victorian. The character designs vary wildly to appealing results. Though Crone may look just a little racist, it's a style that works well in a story propelled by cheery exterior appearances, juxtaposed with brooding undertones and dark secrets. Demuzu's style doesn't throw the book out of the window either. His sense of framing and lighting is on point, setting just the right tone for each and every scene. His panel structuring and pacing from a cinematographic point of view is excellent. Some of the panel layouts are so specific and well executed. Okay, it doesn't always hit its mark, but when it does, it hits well. And wow, these volume covers are some of the best I have ever seen. There's an extraordinary amount of symbolic representation and narrative foreshadowing in them. The more time you spend staring at the covers after reading the respective volumes, the more you find to appreciate in Demizu's sheer attention to detail. The art of A Promised Neverland is unconventional but flexible in its approach to composition and artistic structure without forgetting all the fundamentals of its craft. I Promise Neverland doesn't have the best of stars. It stumbles over its own feet trying to get the plot out of the door and it has a hard time getting you to feel a connection with the main cast. But when it finds its feet, this manga really excels. Its writing is polished and visceral, its cast of villains delightful and Demi Zhu's art is instantly identifiable for its whimsical, rule-bending expertise. Can it stand the test of time? It's too early to say, but as the spiritual successor to those that have, it's a thrill ride that isn't wasting any of its potential thus far. The Promised Neverland Volumes 1 to 3 are available in English print from Viz Media with more on the way. They're also available digitally on Amazon's Kindle service. There's also an anime in the works slated for winter of 2019. 
If you're looking for another psychological thriller, then I'd recommend Death Note. A clear influence on the tone and presentation of The Promised Neverland, Death Note's continuous mental conflict between Light and L is infamous at this point, and if you still haven't checked it out yet, then you're missing out. Or if you just want to check out Jump's other poster children, then go read My Hero Academia, a kick-ass shonen manga that goes above and beyond its predecessors to deliver a simple story that packs a lot of punch. Hopefully one of these will be to your liking. If you liked what you saw and want to see more, remember to subscribe or follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. Links are down in the description and until next time, cheerio.